Hi everyone, it's Chenzo here from Reality Art Pod. This afternoon, I was so excited because we got the Big Brother 25 cast. I've never been Big brother list for so long in my life. It was so nice to see all these fresh faces. So for today, I'm gonna do a breakdown of our 16 new house guests. I'm gonna rank them in order from least to best of how I think they're going to do on Big Brother. So I am gonna give my personal opinions along the way, but this is not a list of who I like the most. This is a list of who I think would do the best in the game with number 16 being no shot at winning and number one being my likely winner pick. At number 16, I have Riley, who seems like a pretty normal person. She's somebody who I'm probably going to root for if she can get past the first few weeks of the game. In her interviews, she came across as very silly to me, but not really in a very funny way. The biggest positive is that she watches Big Brother with her family, so that's sweet. But overall, after watching her interviews, I was left off with more negatives than positives. For example, she said that she was unique, but she didn't give any examples of how she was unique. She seems to me like somebody that would end up floating through a lot of the game, but she adamantly said that she was not going to float, and her strategy was not floating. So what are you going to do, Riley? What are you going to do? Overall, she's my number 16. She seems a little bit too lost in the sauce to everyone Big Brother. Next on the list, I had Blue Kim, which, what a name. I mean... She's a brand strategist. She seems very TikTok-y to me. She was giving big first boot energy. That's why I have her really low on the list. Her strategy is to lie about her job as a brand strategist because she doesn't want them to know she's a quote unquote strategist, which seems fair enough. The biggest blaring red flag for me was everyone else's interviews seem to happen in the diary room. Hers was like in a garage or a storage container. So I don't know where Blue Kim is. I don't know if Blue Kim is going to make it onto the show or maybe she's a really late addition to the cast, but either way, it's just not a good sign for me. At number 14, I have Luke who looks like he's wearing a Ken costume in his interviews. I'm still wondering if he's Ken off for me. He's 30 and he's an illustrator, which could be fun, but he can't draw in the house. But remember when Natalie on Big Brother 9 was like an amazing artist and drew with ketchup on napkins? Overall, in his interview, he came across as really cheesy and boring. And he said he wants to come across like a himbo. So I'm just still getting Ken energy from him. And it's just not fun for me. I put him ahead of the other two because I could see him getting a little bit further than them, but I don't think that Luke is winning this game. This one might be a little bit of a hot take to be so low, but at number 13, I put Jared who is Suri Legend's son. But in the interview that I watched, he didn't really say anything about himself at all to really help me to get to know him. So my biggest fear is that he has a lot of pressure on him to be just like Suri. And so I feel like he might be having a little bit of an identity crisis in the Big Brother house. So yeah, my biggest concern is that he'll get wrapped up in his mom's legacy. And number 12, I put Matt. And I didn't know where to put Matt because my first impression was surfer bro, no chance in winning. The surfer bros never do well. I feel like the closest that we got ever to a surfer bro kind of doing well was Tyler Crispin. Then I found out that he's actually the first hearing impaired house guest, which is super interesting to me. Also having really great success in his personal life with sports. Variety says that he's a deaf Olympics gold medalist. So based on his competition ability alone, I bumped him up a few slots on the list. And I also acknowledge that one day I think that a surfer bro will win. Big Brother. The biggest positive was he said that he wants to win the first HOH, which is probably the best strategy for him to actually win Big Brother. The biggest con for me is that he said that Julie is constantly improving as a host, and now I know he's never watched the show. I agonized over this. At number 11, I put DJ Bowie Jane. My first impression of her from the CBS video that was posted was I thought she was going to be super obnoxious and be the kind of person who ends up floating through the game and not being strategic at all. She's 45 years old and she's a barrister and DJ. Whenever someone's a DJ or a performer and is a little silly, I start thinking of Casey from Big Brother 11 or Jen City or Terrence from Big Brother 24. So it's hard for me to take these people seriously, but I really did try. She's also a lawyer, which gave her a bit of a boost for her strategic factor for me. And in her interviews, she came across as far less obnoxious than in the promo video. Obviously, I realized her accent is that she's the rare international house guest, which is a little bit of a thrill for me. She said there were gonna be intruders, so she's definitely watched Big Brother before. I'm assuming she watched Big Brother Australia. They asked her what she was expecting this season, and she said, I'm expecting the winners to come back, which is exactly what they did on the last season of Big Brother Australia. So it leads me to believe that she's watched recent Big Brother. So based on the fact that I have proof in my head that she has relevant knowledge, I put her at his number 11. At number 10 for me, I put Cameron. Um, I do think that his hair is a big part of his personality, which is not good. He's 34 years old. He's a stay-at-home dad. He kind of reminds me of a young Santa Claus. The plus that got him this high on my list is that he has applied for the show multiple times. It seems like he's a big fan. Seems like he really cares about this. The negative is that he's very emotional. I think he's going to have a rough emotional ride missing his kid. I think he's going to have a rough emotional time playing the game. I just don't think he has it in him to make any really tough decisions that would make him win Big Brother this year. At number nine for me, I have Izzy, who made me smile in the video that CBS posted. I thought that she was very funny and charismatic. She's 32 years old and she's a flautist from New York. I love that she was saying that she wants to be 
be a great representation for queer women on TV. I'm sure she'll be a liked figure in the house. She made me laugh, so she'll definitely be able to make them laugh. The negatives for me was that she said that she started watching Big Brother in January of 2023 and has watched every season twice. And that is impossible. There's no way to watch every season of Big Brother twice in seven months. So I learned today that Izzy is a bad liar and I don't know if she has what it takes to get to the end and win a jury vote. I could definitely see her being a finalist. Up next at number eight, I had Hysam who seems extremely funny and charismatic. He's 45 and he's a geriatric physician. I got a great impression of him that he's a people person. I think he's gonna be very popular in the house early in the game. He definitely has emotional intelligence. Part of me feels like he is way too smart for his own good. He's extremely smart. I think that he's not trying to hide how smart he is. He has a very specific plan to split the house on purpose with an ally as an accomplice, which seems to me like a very bank heisty plan. So this seems to me like the kind of plan that someone would want to execute around week three or week four that completely ends up blowing in their face. Even if he executes plans like this, I don't think that anyone's going to let him get to the final two. At some point during his interviews, he was number one for me, but here he is at number eight. My list from here on are people that I feel genuinely have some shot of winning Big Brother. At number seven, we have Red, another color name, although I don't think we're going to get a purple final two. He refers to him as the chill Billy, which for me, this person is what you get if you cross Rupert from Survivor and Donnie from Big Brother and the Gator Man from The Bachelorette into one person. He seems like a really great guy. I think that he could sneak his way through the game. He works in sales and I think that he might be a really good salesperson. I'll have to check the numbers, but if he gets to the final two somehow, I think that he could win. How he's going to do it, I don't know. So that's why he's number seven. At number six for me, all work, no play. It's Kirsten. She's 25 and she's a molecular biologist. She came across for me really laid back in the diary room. She has a great story immigrating at a young age. She's not really a fan of Big Brother, which is what put her a little bit lower on the list. I'm not too confident in her game ability, though I can see her being in an alliance with the rest of the people in this top six. Overall, I didn't see many negatives with her, but with the other people in the top six, I just saw more good. And number five, I was really happy to put this person so high up, but I put Felicia, who is a 63 year old real estate agent and I love her voice. This is exactly the kind of person that I love on reality TV. It's somebody who 13 year old me would root for a hundred times over. She's so lovely. And because of that, I think that she's gonna make it really far in this season. I can't imagine them voting her out for any reason, anytime soon. The biggest downside isn't really Felicia's fault here, but I do feel like the entire game of Big Brother and the way that the producers put together the challenges are very much geared towards a younger, more athletic person, especially towards the end of the game. So based on the fact that I think that she'll get really far in the game, but the end game challenges are so physical, I do have her here as number five. Coming in at number four, I put Corey Wartenberger, who is 21 years old and is Zach from Survivor's brother. So we have two relatives of Survivor players. I found that to be very interesting my instinct tells me that one of them would probably not do as well as the other. If I had to pick, based on the fact that Corey doesn't have gigantic shoes to fill, given that Zach didn't do particularly well in Survivor, he definitely actually is a super fan. He really knows his stuff. He really made it a point to stress how much of a fan he was. He seems really committed to giving the fans what they want, and I think he's pretty smart and could get very far in the game. At number three, I had America, and I was kind of switching her and Corey around in my list. She's from Texas, 27 years old, which is a good age to be winning a show like this. She's living in Brooklyn. She says that she's a big fan. She keeps going over and over and over again to letting us know that she's a big fan. Part of it came across to me like, go easy on me. I'm a fan just like you. All right, I'll go easy on you. Part of me wanted to put America as my number one also, but when she says her strategy to win, she says she wants to use the kitchen strategy and she wants to flirt. And overall, it seems like her strategy is how did all of the rest of the females win the game? I'm going to just combine it all together and that's going to be my recipe, which is fair. But where is America in that? I really like her. I wish I could put her higher, but my overall faith in her winning the game isn't as high as my other two. At my number two, I put Jag, who's 25 and a truck company owner and real estate agent, the first Sikh house guest. I love the representation. And in these videos, he came across as a super cool guy, very well spoken. He's here to make friends. He's got the riz on this game, I think. Um, also, the fact that he owns a business and is a realtor really makes him super marketable for me. I can't see him going anywhere anytime soon. I think he's the kind of person that if he gets to the end of the game, he can win a jury vote. So for me, he's number two. But my number one, my winner pick has to be my girl, Mikol. What a name. 
She is in politics. She's a political consultant. She's 30, which is the perfect age to be on a show like this. She's married, so no showmance, which I love because less distractions for Nicole. She says she has main character energy. I believe it. And you know what? I think it's about time that we have a political consultant completely manipulate everyone in the Big Brother house. For me, I really want to see what it's like if Olivia Pope is playing Big Brother. So overall, I think that Nicole has got it handled. She's prepared to put on the white hat and to get done what needs to get done. I think she can do well in challenges, socially, politically, and I think that she could win a jury vote. So my money is on me cold this season. I'm gonna be covering the season of Big Brother with weekly updates on Thursdays. Also subscribe to my channel because I post weekly reality TV recaps on Sundays. In summary, one thing that really surprised me about this cast were we got our usual archetypes filled, but a lot of these people after the first impression with their interviews really surprised me and I really appreciate that. I think this is going to be a really great summer. I'm really looking forward to covering it and my impressions may be wrong. My impressions can change. So that's that and a magic hat pat. You got that? Splat. Bye.